All right, hello folks. Uh, this is Alan with another best out of one comprehensive Magic the Gathering Arena draft video. Today, um, we're going to finish up on some Core Set 2020 since the draft is about to end soon. Uh, just want to get this out of the way before we uh, have to wait for the new set. And uh, potentially, you know, um, it should be something exciting. Um, don't know if we're going to go back to Ravnica Allegiance or hopefully, um, surprisingly, even Dominaria would be pretty fun. But that since has rotated out of standard since. Um, but other than that, um, yeah, I wouldn't mind doing some ranked core sets. Of course, I prefer the traditional best out of three with my free um, traditional draft entry. Um, that I have, but uh, for now, we're only locked into the best out of one ranked draft, so uh, let's make the best out of this. Alright, so looking at our first pack, our rare, uh, not very exciting. You don't really want to first pick a dual land in this set, um, simply because um, all colors tend to be quite flexible, and... Um, yeah, you, it's just, you don't really want to take a card with a high power level um, over just a tap land. Unless you're ready in those colors, or you're looking to splash one of those colors um, that your tapped dual land is providing, that I wouldn't first take it. Uh, looking at the uncommons, which ones stand out? Um, Bloodthirst Aerialist is excellent. Um, a 3 mana, 2, 3 flyer is a decent stat line. And the fact that it can constantly grow counters is incredibly powerful. Even with one counter, um, this already becomes a um, three mana. Um, this array becomes a three four flyer, which is already a huge threat that the opponent has to deal with right away. Not only does it provide evasive damage, but it grows over time, and it's also quite an excellent body to begin with. Um, pretty heavy commitment to black, black due to double black, but it's definitely worth it. Um, black has some life gain payoff cards like Blood Burglar. Um, Maybe the uh, one mana Vampire to Dire Moon and Agonizing Siphon that we prefer to pick up along the way if we take this. Um, um, however, it's what will maximize its potential mostly in a white green deck. Um, I mean, like a, a white black deck, but uh, either way, black has plenty of life gain, and even with a single counter, this becomes a huge threat. So, I mean, it might be a little bit narrow, might require a little bit more work, but it's uh, definitely not too much and the payoff is incredibly high so definitely a great uncommon looking at the commons what do we have um as our standout card leaf can druid is great like two mana zero three body is a fine blocker and then um you can accelerate your mana to potentially um wrap into those big green creatures in the late game um green in this set tends to um have lots have lots of giant creatures um and um, they're pretty powerful, of course, so you really want to have some way to ramp them out. Um, otherwise, they're going to just uh, stay stuck in your hand until you get enough lands, which might take a while. Um, and green is a lot more mid-rangey in a sense that it's not looking to be hyper-aggressive right away. And that um, Leaf and Druid is definitely one of the staples, staple um, commons that you want in those um, in the green color. But overall, I think the highest power level of this um, pack is just between Bloodthirst Aerialist and the Leaf Can Druid. And um, I think Leaf Bloodthirst Aerialist is um, just as a, as a whole, just has a higher power level than a um, Leaf Can Druid. Of course, the potential is definitely much more maximized in a white black deck. But either way, um, I think it's a fine um, black card in mostly any black deck. Um, even in like black red or black blue, simply because um, I mean there are, there are dual lands in this set that can um, provide life gain, so Bloodthirst Aerialist can benefit off that. There's a couple of black commons and uncommons that also gain um, you life, so Bloodthirst Aerialist can also benefit from that. Um, so hopefully we pick up some Blood Burglars as two drops that we can play on two, and then we can follow this up with a Bloodthirst Aerialist, Aerialist and a three for, three man two three. Um, body at, for flying is pretty decent, and then once it gains a counter, it's already a uh, significant threat. So don't mind taking the Bloodthirst Aerialist. I think it has a lot more. Um, the power level is just much more higher than Elite Can Druid. Pack one, pick one. So let's take it here. All right, the follow up with the Bloodthirst Aerialist. What do we have? Um, Loyal Pegasus is okay. Um, like a one mana two one flying um, is a good. Is really is really good. Don't 
get me wrong, but the fact that it can't attack or block alone can be quite a detriment. You do need to have a hyper-aggressive deck where you can curve out with low Pegasus on turn 1, and then um, a bunch, make sure that you have 2 drops, a lot of 2 drops to follow up, so then you can um, constantly enable this low Pegasus attack. But um, if you don't have enough 2 drops, then the low Pegasus usually gets stranded, or if the opponent answers most of their ground creatures, it's just not going to do much. And the fact that it can't attack alone is a bit of a problem, because sometimes um, you might have to, um, you might have a bunch of ground attackers but then the opponent has a good um, blocker that's in the way and you might have to lose a creature um, give the opponent a free creature just to enable the two power to attack through the air so um, it's definitely um, has some liability from my experience but a, gr a pretty nice aggressive card if you're already in a hyper aggressive archetype but I wouldn't recommend it unless you're in that archetype um there is iron root warlord which is a great um uncommon um it is in two colors but it's definitely splashable um the ability to pay five to create a, a one one white soldier creature token in the late game as a powerful is a incredible powerful mana sink and then um five toughness is excellent at um three mana and then the power of this card can um grow significantly higher um, um, the more creatures that you have on the battlefield. So it definitely benefits on the white, um, green, uh, go wide strategy. So it's definitely one of those staple cards. Looking at the commons, there's sleep paralysis as an okay removal spell. Sometimes you just need to lock down a flyer or a big creature and sleep paralysis gets the job done. Of course, the creature still stays on the battlefield. So it's, if it has a passive ability, it's not all that amazing. It can also, you can, uh, this sleep paralysis can also get bounced back, um, can be destroyed, um, and it can also be sacrificed with um, cards like Bone Splinters, so it loses value. And speaking of cards that bounce, Unsummon's a pretty good card that um, that basically frees you from removal based enchantment. One mana is incredibly cheap, so you can uh, play around removal spells, um, bounce cards. Uh, blow out combat tricks, um, bounce a giant creature at the end of your opponent's turn. Pretty good card. Um, then Agonizing Summon, pair, Agonizing Siphon pairs well with Bloodthirst Areas. Not the most amazing removal spell, but um, it's removal nonetheless. I uh, can't really big with anything past 4 toughness, but the fact that this can go face is nice. And there tends to be a lot of three toughness creatures and small creatures in this set as well that you want to deal with. Uses agonizing siphon to deal with, of course. Um, but um, but um, but but some but it's it is it can be pretty slow um, with um, it, it, yeah it can be pretty slow um, if um, if you're unable to. Um, um, uh, yeah, at four or at four mana sorcery speed, so there can be some potential um, problems. Same with the reduced ashes sorcery speed removal is not the best. It is quite clunky, um, but it sometimes just gets the job done when you need it to land on something. Um, and the fact that this exiles is pretty relevant, uh, but it is really slow and quite expensive. So looking at this pack, it's just between these. Um, five cards. I don't think I want to take the blue cards or the red removal spell over the black removal since it pairs so well with our Bloodthirst Aerialist. Um, so it's really just between these two, Iron Root Warlord and Agonizing Siphon. Um, the best card in this pack is definitely Iron Root Warlord, um, of course. Um, um, it doesn't pair well with our first pick, Bloodthirst Aerialist, but it still gives us the flexibility and option in case white, um, green is open. I don't know if I would splash this card in like a black green, in, or black green or black white deck, um, but it's still also possible to splash this card, um, if you pick up enough mana fixing, of course. Um, but with the Bloodthirst Airless at double black, it can be a little bit difficult without the dual lands, so it's a little bit um, of a stretch, um, and it is two colors, so I mean, between these two, um, I don't know which one I would take, like Agonized Siphon just pairs well with the Bloodthirst Airless, and uh, keeps us in a single color. Um, Iron Root Warlord puts us into two colors, um, it is more flexible, a lot more powerful than Agonizing Siphon, but we would have to give up on a Bloodthirst Aerialist, I imagine, if we take this card, um, if we take this card, um, we could, again, like, pick up dual lands, but those tend to be quite, um, you never know what colors the dual lands are gonna be, 
So it's a high chance that, um, you know, this doesn't even end up getting splashed. So I don't know, follow up with Bloodthirst Aerialist, it just seems logical to t take the Agonizing Siphon, um, keep ourselves in one color, and Agonizing Siphon is definitely not as strong as Iron Root Warlord, but it's a good card regardless, um, you know, 4 mana, deal 3 damage, gain 3 life, even if it's a little bit slow and clunky, clunky um, there tends to be some 3 toughness creatures that you can handle, and the Agonizing Siphon just... Um, can just get the job done, so, uh, don't know if I want, yeah, I mean, Armored Warlord might be stretching it a little bit more, so to speak, but Agonizing Siphon is just such an excellent follow-up to Bloodthirst Airless that I think I'm just gonna take it here, keep ourselves in one color. Alright, and follow up with the, the Agonizing Siphon, what do we have? There's Angel Vitality, which is excellent in a, um, black, white, uh, life gain deck, so that can set us up for that archetype. I don't think Angel Vitality is great in any other um, in any other two color combinations besides that. It's a fine flyer, don't get me wrong, three mana two two, but it's not gonna be the most amazing unless you are kinda in that life gain deck which we're kind of uh, building up to be. Um, there is Ogre Siege Breaker if you want to plan for like a black red aggro deck, aggressive deck. Um, you're looking to play mostly 16 lands in that type of deck and uh, play lots of small red creatures to kind of um, s begin to um, fight in the early game and then um, potentially drop this down to make it very difficult for the opponent to block or attack. And you can pair this up with Heart Piercer Bows, making this incredibly powerful. So you can activate this ability to um, just kill off other opponents. Um, other good cards, again, there's Agonizing Siphon, a second one, and Unsummon, and also a Sanitarium Skeleton. Um, so, it's really just between, um, I think, Angel Vitality, Ogre Siegebreaker, Agonizing Siphon, and the Sanitarium Skeleton. Um, I'd probably take the, Agoni the second Agonizing Siphon over the Sanitarium Skeleton, just because it pairs so well with Bloodthirst Airless. Sanitarium Skeleton is a good card, don't get me wrong, it's a great card to discard with. Um, it's a great card to, um, basically, um chump block over and over and it's a great card to use as sacrifice fodder and even cards with like blade brand um can go well for sanitarium skeleton um so definitely have a there's a lot of utility for sanitarium skeleton and i'm quite impressed by but i don't think i would take the second as an agonizing siphon because it's like a removal spell and pairs well with sanitarium skeleton so now it's just between these three picks ogre siege breaker would set us up in a more hyper aggressive red um black deck, um, which we could still be, um, but Bloodthirst Aerialist, you definitely want to play this with double black early, and um, sometimes, like, you're playing too many um, two drops that are in red, I suppose, and they can conflict with the double black, but it's still reasonable, we could still be in that color combination, this would be great. Angel Vitality just pairs well with um, black in general, um, so we could maybe set up a nice um, black-white life gain deck, in which this is going to have the most um, upside and potential on so it's really between these three cards we already have an agonizing siphon and again it's not the best removal it can be kind of clunky it is slow but it's fine removal nonetheless and we have one and i don't know how much more clunky removal we want to take we could fit in a second one um just to be safe but i think the upside of angel Val vitality with the current two uh, colors that we picked up is just um much higher than Agonizing Siphon, of course, it's higher variance since it puts us into two cars right away, but it's definitely going to maximize its potential mostly in black, and it can be incredibly powerful um, if, um, you know, we pick up a lot of life gain with this. With this. Ogre Siege Breaker would also be fine, but uh, I th think Angel Vitality, again, has a lot more upside paired with Bloodthirst Aerialist and Agonizing Siphon as of right now. So really, um, I think I'd rather just take the high risk, high reward portion being the angel vitality again i already have an agonizing siphon i don't mind um passing this up it would be a lot more safer since it keeps us into one color but um sometimes in draft you just have to take the high risk high reward payoff it's better to have like a um higher variance um incredibly broken deck over you know a a flexible um but okay deck um that can't really um overtake someone with um a bunch of bombs that you otherwise um, can't. So, um, yeah, in a real-life scenario in the pod, I would definitely take Angel. Higher variance, higher upside, higher risk. And in this situation, I will too. Um, because, uh, again, the power level is just incredibly high if you can pull it off. Sure, we would f miss out on Angel. We miss 
we I mean we miss on agonizing siphon or over siege breaker but we have a couple of other we have more picks to choose from later so uh don't mind taking here um hopefully let's start a black white life gain deck all right so looking at this pack no amazing uncommons no amazing white commons no amazing black commons however there is a tap land with the scar baron that fits well helps uh, with that plays well for bloodthirst aerialist and angel vitality so that's a consideration the best card in this pack overall is shock um um which uh we could again still be in like a black um black red um given seeing that over siege breaker being passed um but this dual land is pretty powerful here given that we have angel vitality and bloodthirst aerialist um i would even still play the tap land even with without the even if we're, we aren't in white, just to kind of enable the life gain from the Bloodthirst Airless, and it still keeps us in black. Um, so right now, the card that pairs best with our pick is just the Scar Barons. Makes a lot of sense. And and if we want to be more flexible and stay more open in case white isn't as open, we can just take the red card Shock. But again, high risk, high reward, um, given that we picked up Angel Vitality, and Scar Barons synergizes well with the Angel and the Bloodthirst Airless. I think is much reasonable to just take the scar barons over here but um otherwise yeah hate missing on the shock but so be it sometimes uh, again high risk high reward so let's take this all right i'm happy seeing a vampire dire moon nice one drop pretty good uncommon uh also um the one one death toucher um is not all that amazing but at the end of the day the life gain lifelink don't is pretty nice since it can kind of synergize with what we currently have and the death touch can really just block big creatures in the late game um Pretty solid play on turn one, and if the opponent doesn't have much to play, we can just constantly chip in damage with this, and this is pretty nice. There's area assault, which I wouldn't mind as well. Pairs well with our Bloodthirst Aerials and Angel Vitality, and I can definitely see myself playing multiple copies in this type of deck. Plays well with flyers, obviously, and uh, if you are a little bit more defensive and controlling. White tends to be a little bit more aggressive in this set, um, so Aerialist is kind of um, a bit of in, can be a bit awkward in. Um, bit awkward in a white aggressive deck since the opponent you tend to um the opponents tend to gonna is tends to want to put up a lot of blockers um and then the airless aerosol is just gonna sit in your hand um all day and um it won't really kill anything but with flyers it's pretty decent because it kind because the ground attackers will want to attack anyway since they can't really uh, um, block the flying creatures and then the aerosol can just kill them on the way back so pretty good card donnie angel is also a pretty good five drop that when mind playing in this deck gains a ton of life you can imagine that dawning angel with angel vitality that's already um five life already and then um you know then it then sometimes this can even become a four four which is incredibly scary um then i don't think anything else i would consider in this pack besides the white and black cards um looking at our curve um yeah we definitely need some early game and um it seems x and the uncommons are and given that vampire of dire moon is an uncommon and uncommons are hard to pick i think i just like it here just to have a solid one drop um plays well the bloodthirst airless especially to just have an early creature that gains life and also the angel vitality but uh, both of these two cards would be pretty good between these two i probably just take the aerosol just to have a bit more interaction and we don't really want too many five drops in limited um and i wouldn't but i wouldn't mind one or two dawning angels but uh, for most part um sometimes um when in doubt they say take the cheaper card and vampire seems solid here all right, uh, no amazing white or black cards. Um, however, I do like an evolving wilds to kind of fix our mana and help splash. Also, hints, dig, dig, thins our deck by one card, which can be a little bit relevant. Um, it's not too relevant, I guess, but it's um, it does help. Um, maybe we end up splashing a third color. Who knows? Um, but uh, right now it's looking pretty solid. The other white cards, Gauntlets of Lights, can be decent with a lot of high toughness creatures, which we currently don't have. It's good with Defensing Age. It's good with the um, um, the the uh, Griffin Sentinel if you can get that going. But it's um, for the most part, it's going to be quite mediocre, and you might just get two for one if the opponent has a removal spell. Um, Glaring Angus, not a big fan of this card. Um, like you know, one three at the end of days and all that amazing as a stat line so don't mind taking the evolving wilds here um natural end can also find targets in this set and also gains us lives 
and it pairs well with Bloodthirst Airless, but it's mostly a sideboard card. I think the upside of Evolving Wilds just has a lot. This is just a lot higher. So let's take it. Um, it's possible that we carry an Eternal Isolation as a removal spell. Um, a little bit clunky due to the fact that it only deals with creatures with power 4 or greater, but um, eventually if the opponent does end up playing a big creature and the uh, Eternal Isolation can get a nice um, target. Um, there is a Sorcerer to Fang, which can be a decent 2-drop blocker, and we currently don't have any, so I can see myself having room for this. It's also a final Mana Stink in the late game to kind of drain the opponent out. Um, since like we can do a bunch of early damage, um, and then in the late game the opponent has too many blockers, you can just keep tapping this to drain them out. And I don't mind taking this, you know. Um, I think Eternal Isolation is a fine removal spell. Don't get me wrong, but it's pretty bad in the early game against aggressive opponents, since it's not going to have a target too often against um, creatures that play more like a big, a big creatures like in green. This can be pretty good, but it is still quite narrow. So I like the Sorcerer here, just get a nice 2-drop, find Blocker. Um, and white, um, black, you tend to be a little bit more aggressive, not hyper-aggressive, so to speak. Um, it's more like a little bit more mid-rangey, so it's fine having like high-toughness blockers, because we are going to play end up playing Daybreak Chaplains in this type of deck, with all this life gain going on, so um, uh, don't mind taking like a high toughness creature and our win condition seems to be like through the air i don't think we're going to try to win via ground creatures and looking to go wide and swarm the opponent i think it's mostly going to be the flyers that's going to try to get there and then we can kind of drain them out with the sorcerer the fang so uh i think this makes sense all right uh looking at this pack uh, what do we have there's a jaybrick chaplain as a pretty solid two drop that Helps with our Angel Vitality. Um, Griffin Sentinel is an okay blocker. There is a Found Fleet Cutthroats as um, a nice creature for an aggressive deck. We already have a Sorcerer. Don't think I'm ever playing multiple of these. So it's just between these three. Um, given that we kind of want to maximize our life gain as of right now, I don't mind taking the Daybreak Chaplain. Um, I mean, the Found Fleet Cutthroat could be fine if we pick up more... Um, I mean, I guess it can be fine if we pick up more Audacious Thief, but we currently don't have any. Um, and it is a 4-drop, and we don't want to get too clunky at that slot. Um, I also wouldn't mind the Marauder's Accelerator. That pairs well with our Lifelink creatures like Daybreak. But uh, given that we have like Angel and Bloodthirst, I think I like the life gain. Um, the 1-3 um, Lifelinker just to kind of help trigger these um, often. Um to make some powerful flyers. Um, Griffin Sentinel, I also wouldn't mind. Only plays well with like, the gauntlets and the weapons, but other than that, it's just a decent blocker. And Phantom Fleet is better for an aggressive, hyper aggressive black red deck. So, uh, yeah, let's just take Daybreak here. Here makes a lot more sense with our configuration. And uh, wouldn't mind a Battalion Foot Soldier. Um, this can add up if we take up uh, a bunch of them. Um, we did pass up on a couple, but that's still fine. We definitely had to pick the more powerful cards over them. But um, if you can pick up like um, four of these, it can be really nice to help thin out your deck and put a bunch of ground attackers. Um, so I don't mind this. There's also Infuriate, which is fine, and Black Red Aggro. But um, given that we're kind of in white already and I really want to leverage this Angel, I think we just take the um, Battalion and see how it goes. And the second one, okay, that's not bad. Um, there's also Hard Piercer Bow and a Blade Brand. Um, um, and, but Heart Piercer Bow is mostly going to do its best in, like, um, blue with a renowned weaponsmith. Can still be pretty powerful in Black Red with the Ogre Siege Breaker if, or Phantom Fleet Cutthroats, but, um, it's mostly going to maximize its potential if you have a renowned weaponsmith. Um, Blade Brand is fine, but, uh, I think I don't mind the third Battalion Foot Soldier, um, and we've... I mean, the second one, if we pick up a third one, I'm definitely going to have an auto-include. Lopex is fine, but again, like, it can be stranded um, sometimes um, since, um, like, the opponent could have just a big ground blocker. Um, Low Pegasus won't be able to um, attack unless another creature is attacking and you have to give up a card just to kind of get two in the air. But um, it's a good card in a hyper-aggressive deck, of course, in a hyper-aggressive, like, Boros aggro deck. Um, I mean, like, yeah, red-white deck, I guess, or white-green, um, but for the most part, um, I think black-white um, with our current configuration is looking to win via Flyers, but I'm liking the second Battalion Foot Soldier. Again, these can really add up. Um, they help um, thin out our deck, put a bunch of ground creatures, and we might even have, like, a kind of a go-wide theme 
with a bunch of these so we can pick up like some inspired charges inspiring captains and um and uh so forth to go along with this so let's take it here uh i don't mind the blade brand more inquisitor is a pretty bad two drop this can go well with uh some of our small creatures or blockers or attackers also cycles so i don't mind it um don't think i'm ever playing prismite um, could just take it in common for the vaults. Not a big fan of glaring agus, but I can see it maybe being played to kind of enhance our creatures. In a sense, I mean, disenchant could also be fine, I guess. Um, and for the four best out of three sideboards, so I think I'll take it just to pretend it's best out of three. Um, don't think I'm taking Moreland. There's a chance we could still be in black red since white was looking a little bit dry in that pack. I mean, we did take um, there was still a dawning angel and um, a the re the Aerial Assault, but I don't want to play Moral Inquisitor, so I might just speculate on Pack Massive as a pretty good 2-drop. So, let's take it. Maybe we do end up in Black Red? Sure. Flip Scale might make it. Alright, um, so looking at our Pack 1 Pick 1, it looks like we were setting up for a Black a White Life Gain deck, which we might um, still be. Um, Angel Vitality is incredibly powerful with um, all the Life Gain going on. Um, but we could still be like in Black Red with kind of our 2 cards here um it can go either way but uh definitely looking to leverage a um um a black uh white deck for the moment and uh with the battalion foot soldiers going off this can be incredibly powerful so uh let's move on all right looking at this pack um what's the best card um dungeon geist is a powerful rare um um definitely incredibly powerful like not only does this lock down and pseudo removes a um, opponent's creature from the battlefield, but um, it prevents a, provides a 3-3 flyer, which can um, act as a win condition. Um, pretty powerful card. Um, there's Flame Sweep, which is kind of awkward in like a um, red deck, I suppose, since most of the creatures tend to be too toughness. But uh, sometimes you might it can be fine in like a red white flyers deck but that doesn't happen too often more battalion foot soldiers don't mind that but i'm um, thinking i'm liking the murder here i think it's the second best card in this pack followed up by by Jun dungeon guys they're both arguably almost at the same power level dungeon guys provides a little bit of upside since it has a gives you a 3-2 flying body and also removes a creature out from the battlefield so definitely has a lot more upside but a uh, murder is definitely one of the best common in this entire set we're looking to play black um, sometimes instant speed killing something um, right away is just what you're looking for, so uh, happy snatching this up. Alright, um, now looking at this pack, what is there? Um, Loyal Pegasus, I just talked about this, don't care. Um, Spectral Sailor is definitely incredibly powerful um, if you can get it, um, if you can resolve this in the late game. Um, um, it's still a fine attacker in the early game, but in the late game it can just win the game by itself since you're just drawing a million cards. Um, would put us into blue-black, which I wouldn't mind because we s seem to have a solid black base and we can still be in blue-black control. Um, so that's also a consideration. Don't think we're playing Creeping Trailblazer is a good card. Clock and Seer is excellent as well. It's a much more quicker card than the Spectral, but um, I think Spectral has a little bit more upside if you can make it into the late game. Of course, both of these are definitely powerful. Um, Clock and Seer draws a card right away, replaces itself, nice elemental, and a 2-1, um, two power flyer is incredibly potent. Um, but uh, Spectral just does, um, just, um, it's just much more um, better in the long run. Um, then there's Salatarian Skeleton, which is excellent. There's also Epicure Blood, which... Um, would maximize its potential in a black um, white life gain dame deck but it's not all that amazing for the most part like a five mana four four is an okay body but with but usually um you know draining the pump by one every single time you you would need some way to um infinitely gain life i guess with like soul mentors to constantly trigger this so it's definitely great with soul mentors but we currently don't have any right now um we have a minor life gain theme that I still don't know if we want to fully commit given that um, white didn't seem to open in the last pack um, but this is a consideration Santarum skeleton is also good um, but overall I think the highest power level of this pack for us is just a spectral sailor um, like we could still be in blue black don't get me wrong uh, we are kind of lacking playables in blue but the other black cards um, 
like even though like Santarum Skeleton is good, I don't think it's comparable to something like a Spectral Sailor that I want to pass up. Um, Moment Heroism is just a combat trick that gains us life, but again, like white seemed to be a little bit dry in that previous pack. Um, like we could still be in like black blue, and uh, Spectral Sailor is totally reasonable if we want to commit to white. I think I would take maybe just the Santarum Skeleton if we want to stick with the white black. Um, but it's not too exciting, and um, it's low risk, to be honest, which wouldn't make a powerful deck. So don't mind snatching up the Spectral Sailor here, maybe speculate on um, Black Blue, just because it's the strongest card, and nothing in this pack in the white or black or remotely comparable to Spectral Sailor, even in kind of like our deck archetypes are just okay. So uh, I think I'm going to snatch it up here, speculate on Black Blue for now. Alright, well there's a Weaponsmith, but there's also Blood for Bones and Audacious Thief in this pack. There's also more Battalion Foot Soldiers. Um, Weaponsmith is definitely excellent if you have a million bows, but um, we passed up a couple of them in the first pack, of course. Um, and we don't even know if we're committed to blue yet, so uh, I don't know about this. Um, Blood for Bones is pretty much a... Um, a Soul Salvage on steroids, um, pretty good with Enter the Battlefield effects since you can sacrifice a creature and fetch a creature back from your graveyard. And not only that, but you can put a creature back in your hand to recast it. Um, so definitely, it's, power it's definitely powerful. Um, Audacious Thief is one of the black co commons in the set. Every single time it attacks, it draws you a card. So if it goes unanswered, you pretty much um, can outvalue the opponent and win the game from there. Um, other fine cards, bow, and another battalion foot soldier. But I don't think I want to take a battalion foot soldier over a black card here. Definitely, um, Audacious Thief and Blood for Bones are at a higher power level. Um, so let's see. <laughs> if we do end up in black, blue, like Blood for Bones is definitely incredibly powerful. Blue has a lot of um, recursions, cards that you want to recur in the late game um, that you can kind of kind of enable those enter the battlefield effects on, and uh, you can also just. Um, get another card and replay it. Um, Audacious Thief is a great 3-drop. Um, I mean, it's it would work better in a more aggressive um, black-white life gain deck, I suppose. Which, again, we still could be. Um, overall, it's just a debate between these two. Um, honestly, we currently don't have any Enter the Battlefield effects, but the fact that this can just recur a powerful flyer in the late game can be really nice, like our Blethers Aerialis. Um, it's definitely a much more powerful card than Audacious Thief when I think about it, since it's already like a 2 for 1. Audacious Thief can still get blocked. Um, you need this, you need Phantom Fleet Cutthroats to go well with this card as well. Um, Blood for Bones is a lot more controlling, though, and it's better in the late game. Um, I mean, there's also Sleep Paralysis that I also want to mention, but we're more heavily committed to Black, so I don't know how dedicated we want to be with the Weaponsmith and the Sleep Paralysis. Um, Blood for Bones and Weaponsmith are comparable in power level. Um, I don't know, like, if we end in Black Red, Audacious Thief is better. Um, Black White, um, Audacious Thief is kind of better. Black Blue, Blood for Bones is a little bit better, but Blood for Bones is still great even in like an aggressive deck. And again, it can kind of recur back our like Bloodthirst Aerialist or some amazing bombs or flyers. So yeah, I can see myself taking Blood for Bones here. Like if we pick up a Meteor Golem or like another bomb in black, a bomb card in black, we can just recur it and uh, it can be more threatening than an Audacious Thief. So I think I'm going to snatch it up here just because of the higher variance. All right, looking at this pack, um... Uh, nothing too amazing, I suppose. Like, we could still be, like, in the black-white life game theme, and another Scar Barons would be fine. There's Raise the Alarm as a two-drop if we still end up in black-white life gain. We could use Boneclad Necromancer as an okay curve topper. Um, yeah, nothing too amazing here. I, like, I don't know if we're even going to be black-blue at the end of the day, and we want to take a Metropolis Sprite. I don't know if we want to be it's still... I mean, we're looking to be more committed to black-white life... Life gain, for the most part, we do have a Scar Barons already. Um, don't know if I want to play two of them. It does work well with the Angel of Vitality, but I'm like, it's all over the place for the most part. Um, Raise Alarm helps us go wide as a two drop. Um, we could just take a safe pick, being the Blown Clad Necromancer as a fine five drop, which I don't mind. You know, it's okay at the end of the day. Most of this pack is pretty much okay. Um, higher variance picks like the Scar Barons, we already have one. Um, is fine, but um, 
think it's almost halfway through pack 2 and we kind of just want to solidify ourselves and have enough playables, so uh, don't mind seeing myself playing a Boneclad Necromancer, so I think I'm going to take it here. In this occasion we can stay safe, um, there's a Soul Mender which works well with our Bloodthirst Aerialists and our Angel Vitality, but there's also a Phantom Fleet Cutthroat at 4, which is a lot safer, um, and Axe can go along with our Life Linkers pretty well. Um, don't want too many Soul Menders, they, they aren't too amazing. Um, like, it's fine with the Angel and the Bloodthirst in the early game, but um, at the end of the day, it's a pretty bad blocker and attacker. The Cutthroat can work well if you're being aggressive with the Battalion Foot Soldiers, I suppose, and you can get a nice um, one for one just by dropping this on four. Also, plays well with Audacious Thief, keeps us in black. So, don't mind taking it here just to stay ourselves in black. Blood Burglar's excellence, okay. Uh, one of my favorite two drops. Um, the Life Game is nice to go along to Bloodthirst Airless and also the Angel. Um, overall, this pack is pretty bad. Um, Diamond Knight, I would play in like a heavy monocolored deck, um, which we still could be. We're like heavy black, but uh, I like it's still gonna take a while to grow this. Like you at least need to make this into a three-three to make this even remotely relevant, and it's quite slow. But uh, Bloodthirst Airless, just I mean the Blood Burglar just makes seems to make sense here with our current build. Okay, um, yeah, I guess there's no blue, um, and blue has been kind of dried up. Um, so, yeah, um, I don't think we missed out on much, even though we passed out, like, on a Scoured Barons. Um, we could add a second one. We took a, um, Boneclad Necromancer over it. Um, we, we passed up a Soul Mender as well, but right now, um, yeah, it seems like, um, Black-White is, uh, relatively open, since Blue wasn't getting passed up, so what can we take here? There's Scourging Vulture, which is a fine flyer that can gain us a bit of life. Goes well to Blood for Bones, since we can kind of recur creatures from the graveyard and helps mill us. Um, Area of Salt is a removal spell, um, and we're kind of lacking in interaction. I guess we do have an Agonizing Siphon and a Murder. Um, maybe a Family Cutthroat can remove a creature as well. This does play well for our Flyers, I suppose. Um, our threes are looking kind of stacked, unless we don't play the Battalion Foot Soldiers. I wouldn't mind the Inspiring Captain as an Anthem effect, but I don't think... It, I, th I think the priority cards here are the Arrow Assault and just the Gorging Vulture. Um, Gorging Vulture does play a little bit better with, like, the Blood for Bones. But sometimes it could, like, this card could have Diminishing Returns in a sense, since you might end up milling, like, a Murder or, like, an Agonizing Siphon or a Removal Spell that you otherwise can't recur, unless you have, like, a Scholar of Ages or more soul salvages, or you might even end up milling the blood for bones. Um, and our threes are looking kind of stacked here, um, but it's definitely a good card in our deck, don't get me wrong, but uh, I think the upside of Aerialist is worth it since we have two good flyers, also gains a bit of life, some removal that I don't mind taking. Um, and then again, we're not looking to be hyper-aggressive, um, but slightly aggressive, so uh, don't mind the aerial assault. Um, and another third battalion. Okay, so black-white it is. Um, we're at the end of pack two and we really need to commit and uh yeah i don't think we're gonna move into black blue anytime soon a third um battalion foot soldier is pretty nuts if we pick up five of them it's even more nuts so right then we can definitely prioritize the anthem effects like um uh inspiring captains and um inspire charges so happy seeing a third one maybe we do end up playing a moral inquisitor if we don't have enough twos uh, don't mind an Epic here, just if we pick up more Soul Menders, has a little bit of synergy in our deck. Not too much, but um, like Agonizing Siphon, Aerial Salt, Daybreak Chaplain, Blood Burglar, Vampire Dire Moon. Yeah, just a little bit, but um, if we pick up a little bit more Soul Menders, I can see this making the cut. Okay, uh, yeah, this is absurd. I don't know, they really need to fix the bots. Um, there's no way... Yeah, I think we just snatch it. There's no way... This should be happening, and we should have a pretty powerful white-black um, life gain deck with with a go-y theme. And I think, believe it or not, I think the go-y theme is a lot more um, promising than the black-white um, life gain theme. Um, just given that we have quadruple battalion foot soldiers, and now inspiring charge is pretty powerful. So we're definitely looking to go wide now. Um, even a soul mender. Okay, happy seeing this. Um, yeah, um, so looking good. We already have enough playables. What are we looking for? Some upgrades. Maybe uh, we can um, get a better 2-drop over the Moreland. Maybe even cut the Sorcerer if we feel like we don't really need a late-game mana sink. Um, 
maybe Inspiring Captain to replace the Inspired Charge. Um, so we have 21 cards currently with these two lands, but uh, right now we're definitely committed to White Black Life Gain. Um, hopefully we pick up like a Enchanter or more some, some Dawning Angels um, in the next previous pack. But uh, yeah, pretty nice draft. Life Gain and there's a Life Gain and Gold Wide theme going on. So um, definitely going to prioritize on those. So let's move on. Right, um, well, Knight of the Ebon Legion is um, one of the best rares in this set. Um, one mana, one, two is fine. It's, it's good play on, on turn one. And a single pump already makes this incredibly large. This card is a pretty a pretty scary card to um, block. Um, it's pretty difficult to block, of course. Pretty difficult to remove with damage based removal since it can pump itself. And whenever um, um, a player loses four life, that includes us, this grows. So, um, pretty broken rare, in fact. Um, uh, don't mind seizing this. I wouldn't also mind another Angel Vitality as well, which is excellent. Um, um, there's also Yorox Fenlurker as a good 2-drop. Um, I wouldn't mind Pacifism as a good removal spell. But between these four, um, the strongest card is definitely the Knight of Eleven Legion. If Knight wasn't in this pack, what would I choose? I wouldn't mind a second Donnie Angel just to kind of give us more evasive flyers to kind of close out the game. But Pacifism would also be close since um, it's solid removal, um, gets rid of a threat. We do have some removal already. Um, we could use a little bit more, of course. But uh, like Angel just has a lot more upside in this life gain type of deck and you can usually win with little removal and lots of evasive uh creatures but i don't think i can pass up knight here um doesn't require life gain can easily grow um so i'll play on turn one um three mana giving this three three and death touch is already broken by itself so i'm um, obviously taking it here all right uh now what um skeleton how good skeleton in this deck um I guess it goes well to Blood for Bones. Um, we didn't currently pick up any Bone Splinters. It can still be fine with Blade Brand, I suppose, so it's pretty decent. Uh, Gorging Vulture. Um, we only have one way to recur creatures, and that's Blood for Bones. Um, so I don't know how heavily we want to commit ourselves into this. Like, it could mill up, mill up, mill our murders again, or like a Knight of the Evan Legion, which I don't want to mill in the late game. Provides a little bit of life, but we have Soulmender gain life, Vampire, um, Blood Burglar. Daybreak Chaplain, um, some so some pretty decent ways to gain life already. There's also Inspiring Captain if we want to have like a Anthem effect and a four drop body, which is nice. But these tend to wheel, um, and I don't really want. I'm, and both of these cards are replaceable, vice versa. Like I could end up playing Inspiring Captain over an Inspiring Charge, and Inspiring Charge would be fine over the Inspiring Captain. This puts a three three body, which is also pretty nice. But um, at the end of the day, you're really just doing this for the Anthem effect. A four mana three three is not a good body. There's also Blossoming Sand to kind of gain a little bit of life. But I think Sandterm Skeleton, our first copy here, is nice just to go with our Blood for Bones and some potential Bone Splinters that might be passed up. Fine Chump Blocker as well. Fine play on turn one. So let's take it here. Uh, also, wouldn't mind a Raise the Alarm. Uh, there's, ooh, I guess, never mind. There's a Blood Burglar here. Like, there is a Gold Y theme going on, um, and the Raise the Alarm would be pretty powerful. But, um, um,. The, I think the I think the Bloodburger is in fact just a better card. At the end of the day, this is just a two-two almost, but this is like a two-two of some life gain and some upside, which pairs well for Angel and Bloodthirst Airlist, and it's a good replacement over the Moreland Inquisitor. Um, and our real our only goal why payoff is like Inspired Charge and like Battalion Foot Soldiers at the end of the day. Like we just want to kind of have some more life gain going on, and Blood Burglar is excellent. Uh, just talked about this vulture. Not gonna talk about it again. So let's snatch it up here. All right, happy seeing an audacious thief. There's also another agonizing siphon as an okay removal spell, but uh, audacious thief is definitely powerful. Um, again, if it goes unanswered, um, pair as well to finally cutthroat. You can just draw a million cards and outvalue the opponent. That being said, we are kind of light on removal. Um, like, yeah, but Agonizing Siphon is, again, a clunky removal spell. Again, it does give us some life gain. But I think I like the Audacious Thief here, um, just to kind of draw into some stuff. And if it goes in answer, it can be incredibly potent, and we still have a whole pack to go through. Uh, so don't mind taking it here, just to have our first copy. Uh, and there's our Bone Splinters, pair as well with our Santarum Skeleton as a removal spell. There's also Squad Captain that has a great payoff card for going wide and I can still see myself playing it but we have some five drops already um, 
I think the Soul Blood Bone Splinters is worth it. We can pair it up with the Santerum Skeleton, maybe the Soul Mender after becomes obsolete maybe some of our battalion foot soldiers or tutus um but we really need to work on some remo removal here um i wouldn't mind a second third blood burglar blade ran is fine um but i think it's just between bone splinters and squad captain squad captain would be a fine payoff card and curve topper but i think we can win with it like we can definitely like kind of just go wide um and as long as we have some removal we can kind of win with our flyers or two flyers and then kind of drain them with the um epic here with our life gain and then um maybe even smash through inspire charge or drain them with sorcerer but i think we kind of have to maximize on our removal right now and the bone splinter just plays well to santerm skeleton so so i think i gotta take it here and then our vampire seems excellent well a fifth battalion foot soldier is pretty broken um don't know if i take it over to dime room maybe it's worth it um just to like thin our deck even more. We already have a bunch of one drops I don't mind playing. We already have a Vampire of the Dire Moon. Um, Warchief would be a okay five drop, but it's just a five drop. That's okay. So just between these two here, um, given that we have four foot soldiers, five is pretty insane. Um, we do have a good couple of one drops already. Um, we might have to cut the Moral Inquisitor, but that's fine. Um, eh, Vampire is just too good here. I mean, it's a 1-1 with Death Touch, so it can block something incredibly big. It also has some life gain, so uh, and it's a good turn play on turn one play. And even then, we already have four battalion foot soldiers, so we can search up a bunch of them already. And it's still three mana, so that can be quite expensive. So I don't mind the second one. I think it's just a better card overall than battalion. We have like four of them already that could kind of thin out our deck. And this is still this card can still be relevant in the late game, I suppose, just as a good ground blocker. Um, and, but definitely an excellent early game card, so I'm going to snatch it up here. Um, now, Soul Mender versus Daybreak Chaplain. Is this a deck for Blood Soaked Altar? Um, it's a fine win condition, um, but if you're not playing in the right deck, it's not a playable card. Um, it's good for Santerm Skeleton. Um, but I don't think this that's our game plan. We aren't looking to make a bunch of demons at the end of the day. It's better than like Black Green. I guess, or if I had like double Santerm Skeleton, so I can just constantly discard and uh, re reanimate, then this would be good. Um, so it's between Daybreak and Soul Mender here. Um, Soul Mender provides the infinite life gain that we're looking for. Daybreak Champion's a good blocker for two mana. So it's kind of build our deck. Currently at 26. Um, I think I like all these. Could just cut the Sorcerer to Fang, to be honest. Uh, we already have a Soul Mender on one. I mean, it is. you can tap this infinitely, I guess. It goes well with the Epic here and kind of the Angel. Daybreak Chaplain can only trigger if it's attacking, so it can be a bit of a problem. Since and Soul Main Mender can just be constantly activate every turn to like enable the Epic here and kind of grow our Bloodthirst and our Angel Vitality. So I think I like it here, um, since it seems to have a lot more upside. Uh, I would mind a second Epic here. There's a second Inspired Charge, but we have one already. There's also a Vengeful War Chief, but um. I don't think we're going to lose life at the end of the day too much. We're the ones gaining life. Like, it pairs well with the Audacious Thief, but uh, maybe a uh, second Epicure is okay, and we can just cut the Bone Clap Necromancer. Well, uh, don't think I need three Epicures. Um, do I need a Feral Abomination? Probably not. I think I have Double Soul Mender. That should be enough. It can get pretty awkward in multiples. Maybe Moment just to kind of gain us life and a combat trick that we might need to use. But overall, um... This pack is passable. Ooh, I like Inspiring Captain. Plays well with a Y theme. Uh, maybe just take in common for gems. Don't think I'm playing any of this. Alright, sweet. Um, so we have a pretty uh, synergistic black-white life gain deck with some gold white synergies going on. So I think this deck is incredibly powerful. Um, so how much do we need to cut? Um, I could just cut the Evolving Wilds. It does search up a land, which is pretty nice, so it kind of thins our deck, so I think I might like it here. I think the uh, Epic here is going to perform better than the Boneclad Necromancer, so I think I can see myself cutting it. Um, could see myself cutting Inspired Charge. Now we have an Inspiring Captain as well. Um, I think I like my removal spells here. I like the Aerialists. I like the Battalion Foot Soldiers. Um... Like in the bone splinters, so three cuts. Um, um, 
so what can we cut? I guess moment can be cut. Like it's just a combat trick. It gains life, however, but um, yeah, I don't think I can see myself playing it. I think I like the threes. The five is nice. Um, could just cut a land as crazy as it seems, but um, probably not because we kind of have some. We kind of make sure we want to hit our land drops. Maybe we just cut. I don't know. Aerial assault is a bad um, removal spell. Could just cut the Blade Brand, to be honest. Uh, we do have two Death Touchers already. Um, I mean, I could imagine going 16 lands with just one Epicure, but Epicure is just a good win condition. And we do need some Curve Toppers, like otherwise um, we're not going to have too much late game, and the Soul Menders aren't going to, and the life gain isn't going to um, benefit too much. Unless we can find a way to drain them. Uh, so maybe we just cut the um, Blade Brand here. I like the Aerial Assaults just to have a little bit more removal. And then one more cut. Um, maybe I just cut a Soul Mender. Probably not. Because I, I need to have like infinite ways to gain life. Maybe just a Daybreak Chaplain. Um, we're kind of lacking twos though. I like the Cutthroat here. The Inspiring Captain can kind of help I guess. Because we don't have a lot of curve toppers, we could. I guess we can kind of still go 16 lands here in this weird deck. Believe it or not, um, like I don't want to risk flooding. So uh, what do we need to cut? Uh, maybe just um, let's see. Uh, Looking at our mana base, 14 black and 10 white, so definitely favoring black a little bit more. Um, the evolving wilds can kind of thin our deck as well. Um, I guess I maybe see myself cutting the Evolving Wilds, um, since it's a tapped land. Um, um, the fact that it helps you find a land is really nice, however, but um, it's not two lands, it's still a land at just one single land at the end of the day, and uh, it can be kind of bad if it's played tapped, so maybe like, out of planes, maybe just 16 lands. 9-7 seems decent because we're kind of favoring black a little bit more. Um, 20 creatures, um, 4 non-creatures, so it's kind of review. Moment can be fine our deck as a pump trick, I suppose. But it's still not very good. Um, I guess the Inspiring Captain is not all that amazing. Like It's fine to pump our creatures, but uh, I don't know if we're going to kind of... I mean, I don't know if we're that... I don't know if our win conditions to go that wide and just smash. Um, so I can see myself cutting it, but I, I think this might have a little bit more upside over moments since it's better if we're going wide. I mean, this just replaces the inspiring charge. Um, ooh, why the hell is the murder not in our deck? Let's put it back. So that's weird. Uh, so now what? Um, yeah, I think I accidentally put Blade Branch. So we're currently 16 lands here. <sighs> I think the fives are already stacked. I think Epicure is going to do a lot more work than Boneclad Necromancer in this deck. I could see myself playing a Sorcerer. Um, but really with 16 lands now, I think what we want to do is cut. Um, so one more cut here. I can see myself playing Aerial Assault, of course. I think I like all these removal spells. Uh, yeah, maybe just cut the Inspiring Captain at the end of the day. Um, I can see myself cutting a Soul Mender, I guess. Like, how are we going to win? The two Flowers help. I guess we can drain them with double Epicure. Um, with all these Soul Menders. And the Soul Menders really help with the Angel of Vitality. If we can dump it down the early game and even helps pump the Aerialist. Um, I think, I guess we can cut the Inspiring Captain and call it a day. I suppose. There's a possibility that we could also cut the Battalion Foot Soldiers. Um, but what would we play? A Moral Inquisitor, a Inspiring Captain. Potentially, um, so let's just say we cut the Battalion Foot Soldiers. Theoretically speaking, uh, we end up playing a, um, uh, maybe Moment makes it. Um, maybe the Inspiring Captain, maybe the Sorcerer, um, and one more playable. Um, don't 
Don't think we need bone clad because our curve is high already and we're going 16 lands. Maybe a blade brand, I suppose. So something like this. The, the battalions do really help thin our deck though, so that's also a consideration. Um, I mean, I guess Inspiring Captain is not too amazing. It, it's the fact that it helps us thin our deck is nice, since we don't want to end up, like, flooding out. And we want to kind of kind of hit our playables, it seems. Um, but, I mean, this deck configuration can also be fine, I suppose. Like... Yeah, I don't want to play Morlin. Uh, don't want to play Inspired Charge. If we add a land, we have to cut another playable, which I don't want to do. Um, I mean, this can be fine. Moment can help us gain some life and uh, kind of push through a blocker that's in the way. Um, Blade Brand can give us Death Touch in case we need to cycle or get a nice attack in. Or block, and it's also more removal, I suppose, since we're kind of lacking in the interaction department. I don't know. I mean, it could just be better. I mean, I don't know why Blood for Bones is not in our deck. Um, what what the hell is going on? Uh, yeah. Buffer bones, get, get back here. What's what's going on? Ooh, there's an agonizing siphon being cut. Yeah, they need to fix this bug. Let me hit the home screen again. Well, drop is going to end in a couple of minutes. Um, so, hmm. uh, yeah, maybe it's just better like this. Like the baton foot soldiers do help thin our deck, I suppose, and we did prioritize taking them. But at the end of the day, I think this just might be better, so we're going to try this deck out. Like, this does help in our deck, like, it's kind of make sure that we don't miss, we don't miss draw steps. We still have a bunch of bodies on the battlefield. Um, decent, but I, I don't think we have a great go-wide deck for the most part. And then I think we can kind of just win by draining them out with the life gain going on. I don't know, we'll see. I might switch it up if this isn't too, doing too well. Um, a little bit more black than white, but I don't think I can go down to um, seven white sources. So let's try this. So what we want to do is we want to aim for turn 1 Soul Mentor and then turn 2 either Aerialist, I mean turn 3 either Aerialist or the Angel of Vitality. I think our game plan is to win via air and then just win via um, using the Epic here to drain them. Or even the Sorcerer the Fang I guess. Um, And I just wanted to have the moment of Heroism Blade Brand just have a little bit more removal in the deck that we otherwise don't have if we go for the uh, four battalion foot soldiers plan.
No, oh, hopefully we hit the two minute mark and find a game. Or maybe ranked drafts is over for M20 almost and nobody wants to play it. Shouldn't take this long. All right, we finally found our first opponent. All right, we have a turn one Soul Mender and a turn two Blood Burglar and even a Blade Brand we can cycle. Uh, we're on the draw. I think this is worth keeping. Pull him with a red. He could have a shock up. But this Soul Mender can gain life in the meantime. Um, so he's playing a uh, red, green aggro. Ooh, okay. Happy seeing the uh, Angel Vitality. So I think I want to leave with Blood Burglar just to gain a little bit more life. I could attack for one, but I think the life gain is a little bit more important to just kind of uh, make sure we grow this Angel into more gigantic. So if I gain one life this turn, next turn I can gain three life. I can be at 23 with the Angel. Um, I think it's worth it just uh, not attacking just to gain the life. Right, uh, and then I'm gonna gain one life at the end of this turn. Make sure, hopefully he doesn't have a shock, but I don't think I'm playing it around, playing around it. So happy to just play out this Angel Vitality for now. Get an attack with the Blood Burglar, and then um, then I can um, also tap this Soul Mender to play around the removal spell. I guess if he has a shock, I can tap this in response and make this into a four-four. Alright, Healer of the Glade. The opponent's playing uh, a life gain card in a um, aggressive uh, two color combination. Sure. Do have Blade Brand in case he has a pump trick with the Healer of Glade and we can get a nice two for one. Pump Bottoms. Alright, and Maniacal Rage. Sure. Pump. Pwn can't block, so um, he's going to try to outrace us and try to um, basically uh, leverage this Season of Growth to draw him a million cards. Getting life, end of turn. Alright, this is already a 4-4. Four, four. Um, I think I'm fine playing Swamp. I could attack with a Soul Mender. Um, let's see. I think the life game is a little bit more important against a hyper-aggressive deck, so I think I'm sending these two in. For six, and uh, I can either cycle—I can cycle the uh, blade brand in turn, or just—I um, mean, I guess I can block and blade brand. That's also a consideration. But this is all right. He's going to wolf King bond it, so this is definitely worth blade branding here. I think I'm willing to tr unblock with the daybreak chaplain and, um, and essentially uh, trade it off with the blade brand, and that's already a nice, powerful two for one. Don't think the opponent's gonna kill me anytime soon, so what we're gonna do is block here. I'm gonna block the Daybreak since um, the Soul Mender can give me infinite life over time while the Daybreak Champion is forced to attack. So this is nice. Am I fine training off my Blood Burglar? Um, yeah, maybe just to avoid him from uh, equipping more stuff. Yep. All right, well, it scoops it up. So yeah, pretty good deck. Um, don't think the battalion foot soldiers can do what the blade brand did last game. Um, so I'm happy including it and chain switching them out, and we do still have enough good playables. Um, so let's um, keep playing.
Alright. Um, turn 1 Soul Mender. Ooh, this looks good. I can uh, turn 1, play a Vampire Soul Mender, and then lead. And then if I get my second black, um, I can play up my Bloodthirst Aerialist. I think it's worth risking here. I'm on the draw, so. What do I want to lead off with? Um, um, depends. Like, eh, yeah, let's play off the Vampire. Maybe and get a good attack in, and also gain some life. Don't really need to tap the Soul Mender immediately. Um, don't think that there's any Flash creatures I need to be aware of. There's a Spectral Sailor, but um, I don't think he wants to trade off for Vampire. So I just need a single Black Source, and then I can start gaining a million life. Okay, the Warden is something. Ooh, this is looking great, so uh, don't mind playing the Airlist. Might just offer to trade the Vampire to Dire Moon. Don't mind it. Like, this is a good trade, simply because, um... Um... Simply because this is gonna help him ramp later. Don't mind this. And I can even just tap the Soul Mender, end of turn, to constantly grow this. So Soul Mender is definitely powerful in this deck. Happy to have two copies of them. And he might have a sleep paralysis here. Ooh, a frost links. Okay, let's see what he taps. Alright, and let's gain some life with the Bloodthirst Aerialist while it's tapped. Um, could just play the Cutthroat here. Might as well. Um, don't see myself attacking the Soul Mender onto this. And we can always fetch it back with Blood for Bones. So I think this is fine. And then we can say go. This is going to become a ginormous, ginormous threat that the opponent eventually needs to answer. The attack is strange. That can imply that can imply a cutthroat, and I'm still at a pretty reasonable life total, so I think I'm fine just taking it here. Um, so no blocks. Right. So I think I can get in with the. Cutthroat and the Bloodthirst Aerialist, we'll see. I have a Bloodthirst Bones to revive the Bloodthirst Aerialist if he has a murder or something. Could have could have um, tapped this to get an extra damage in, but um, I think I missed, missed it, I, I suppose, so. Yeah, maybe I should have, but uh, I'm still, still kind of like a two, three turn clock anyways. A two turn clock, even if I pump this. There's no reason why he should attack here, I don't understand. He's playing a more controlling deck in the first place. Pharaoh, okay. Could just attack with the Phantom Fleet, I guess. Um, and if he blocks, I mean, I don't really want to Blood for Bones my Soul Mender, but I'm fine just tapping this, to be honest, to grow the Bloodthirst Airless and get in for 7. And I still have, like, Aerial Assault, and I'm at a pretty reasonable life total as well. So I think we're still good. Alright, the Heart Piercer Bow is just going to deal with the Soul Mender, sure. But he would need some way to kill off my Aerialist, I suppose. Alright, yep. I guess whenever we have turn 3 Bloodthirst Aerialist or Angel Vitality, we just kind of win the game. So, I um, guess that's the plan. Just kind of looking over everything, making sure I'm not missing on anything. Yeah, seems good. I think I like having no Evolving Wilds in this deck. Otherwise, it almost feels like 15 lands if we're playing the Evolving Wilds. And ready, 16's already a bit sketchy. And Soul Mender is definitely doing a lot more work than a Daybreak Chaplain would.
All right, um, we have turn one vampire, turn two chaplain, turn three angel. Um, seems like a good keep. And I can start gaining a bunch of life eventually to make this into a 4-4. We'll love a soul mender. I think it would pair be a little bit better since um, since this is gonna gain a little bit more life. Um, so next turn, I need to watch out for the um, the raise the alarm that the opponent might play if he keeps up two mana. I guess there's an ancestral blade. But I don't think I mind trading that off. Um, so angel looks good here, and this can become a four four once um. I managed to trade off the Vampire. Could just attack with the Daybreak and next turn this becomes a 4-4. Four four. Because he could have something bigger that I need to block. But this does get a creature out of the way, so yeah, let's attack. A Moreland Inquisitor, okay. I don't think I care too much. If you want it to equip, that's fine. I can finish it off with Cutthroats. And I don't mind trading my Daybreak Chaplain for it. Just to get another creature out of the way and just kind of uh, develop my board. You could have the um, removal trick at 3 mana. But sometimes, again, you just have to go for it with these type of decks. The three mana destroy top creature would be pretty threatening here, sleep paralysis. So there's a lot of ways that this can go wrong. But his own angel, sure. Guess I could trade off for it. Don't mind if I do. Ooh, and even Epicure to follow up. Yeah, let's go for it. If he wants to trade, that's fine. Alright. Opponent could have that card that destroys tapped creatures. Okay, wing words to draw two. So he's kind of on the back foot. He might have to be forced to chump, play another creature and chump next turn. Um, I can win with the epic here if I pick up enough a soul mender and uh, drain them over time. Opponent just passes turn, I guess. Sure. Right, guess we're just gonna go for it. He could have like a moment of heroism, but he'll be still be taking a lot of damage if he tries to uh, like block my angel and use moments. Like he gains a bunch of life, but he's still taking a bunch. Okay, he has it. Sure. Gains five, six. Okay, still at a low life total, and I can keep getting there in there with the epic here's with the epic here, I guess. Um. He could just attack me in the air. I can aerial assault it, this creature on the ground. Alright, the gauntlets is annoying. Uh, I guess he's just going to stay back with it, I suppose. I would love for him to attack. Okay, he's not. I guess we can just play out Swamp, say go. Eventually I can find Soul Mary just and constantly drain the opponent, but for now we're just kind of on the stalemate. All right, Diamond Knight is... I can't kill with Aerial Assault, but I can definitely answer the Angel. I guess the Angel can untap itself um, with the 3 mana to play around the Aerial Assault with the Gauntlets, now that I think about it. But if he taps down the decides to attack, I'm all for it. Opponent name's White. All right, Blood for Bones is something. Um, I could get in there with the. Um, hmm. What can I do with Blood for Bone? Hmm. I could get in there with the Cutthroat, I guess. He blocks with the 3 5. I can Blood for Bones getting back the Epic here and then the um, Angel Vitality. That doesn't seem that bad. Well, I mean, I can Blood for Bones. On the on another cutthroat, I guess, and then um, 
Yeah, let's get an attack here. Could attack the Epic here, I suppose, but I think I'm fine just attacking for three here. Could just double block, I guess, and that's still a good two for one that I'm willing to take. Plus, obviously, gonna think something's up, but I don't mind, like, just Blood for Bones, get back a Fathom. Yep, let's do that. So this isn't bad, um, I can now cast Blood for Bones, sacrificing my Epic here. Let's return the Cutthroat, and then let's return the Angel. So opponent effectively loses the lot, so now we have a 4-4, seems good. needs to still deal with this 4-4 flyer, I, I guess. This knight would be pretty scary if he can constantly grow it. Well, that hanged executioner is just not something I want to see. Um, he does need 4 mana to exile this, but I'm willing to 2 for 1. I guess he can still double block with the um, Cloud Conseer and the um, Spirit Token. But I definitely need an answer to this hanged executioner, otherwise that's going to be a problem. Ooh, Agonizing Siphons, excellent. I could shoot it at the Diamond Knight. But I think I want to, obviously, hmm, shoot the Hang Executioner, maybe. If I kill the Diamond Knight, what happens? I attack the Angel, he's going to double block the Angel, the angel Vitality. Um, I could just kill the Hang Executioner and hang back. I mean, this Diamond Knight is a bit scary too, however, but this Hang Executioner is just going to deal with my Angel next turn. I don't know. Um, yeah, let's start with the Siphon. I guess I could shoot the face, but that's still not lethal. I just th I think doing this and staying back is fine. Because I don't want to offer the double block, but the Hanged Executioner definitely had to go, otherwise he's just going to exile my Angel. Need to pick up a Murder or something, this would be pretty good. Right now I don't mind just taking three. Steadfast Sentry, so this is going to grow, it's going to start clocking me, and I'm going to start losing life, and I need to stay at 25 to keep this as a 4-4. So I might just go for an attack next turn. Alright, he can't really attack the Steadfast Sentry, so I don't know why he did that. Um, he can only attack the Diamond Knight. So I guess his plan is to actually equip the Ancestral Blade onto the Diamond Knight. It's definitely not blocking. There's no need to. Um, and he's just going to equip back on the Flyers. In that case, I might want to... Um, yeah, he needs to equip onto this. Alright, um, so that buys me an extra turn. Um, still going to stay back here. Um, my, I, I, can I can still afford to take four. Um, and then next turn I can attack in and get like a two for one I suppose but for now I still think I have time to like top deck a murder or something to deal with the opponent all right the opponent's just gonna go like this don't think I'm blocking this is eight damage but I should still be at 25 I guess yeah and there's no need to block otherwise he's gonna put a counter onto something I'm going to still be at 25 life, so um, this is going to still be remaining as a 4-4. Right, that's annoying. Um, so now I need to get in a good attack. I have to attack, or otherwise next turn I'm going to be at 20. Um, I'm going to be at pretty low life total, I suppose. Right, a Blade Brand isn't bad. I can keep it behind on defense. But I think I need to attack with the Angel this turn. Um... Just to kind of, um, I could play Brand, Brand the Angel, I guess, um, to get the nice two for one. Yeah, I might just do it. Doesn't give me a good blocker against the, um, ooh, even a moment is really good, so this is excellent. That was a really powerful top deck. All 
all right that's excellent and uh i guess now we can see go all right diploma is probably just going to go out for an all-out attack here um I don't mind killing. I don't mind trading off for the steadfast sentry and taking eight, and I'll still be at 25 life. Um, I think this is reasonable, and then we can uh, pretty much use the aerial assault on uh, one of the tap creatures. I'm still at 25, so this angel vitality is still 4-4. If he wants to put on the flyer, that's fine. I can easily aerial assault the flyer out of the way, so he doesn't have another chump blocker, and then I can have a free attack on the ground. Right, um, so this is looking nice. I can also even just play out the Epicure of Blood. I don't mind if he counters this. Um, I guess he doesn't. And then we can Aerial Assault the Flyer. And then we can drain him for one with the Flyer. So that um, Clutch Moment Heroism was really nice with the uh, Pop Deck Blade Brand. So now I can leave the opponent at one and a single life game will pretty much um, kill him. And I don't mind taking the hits here, I guess, um, from this Diamond Knight, since only one damage will kill off the opponent. Will kill off the opponent. But the opponent does have a pretty strong um, blue-white Flyers deck with the Hanged Executioner. It was quite scary for a moment, but the Blade Brand was definitely worth doing in that spot. So, pretty clutch game. Currently uh, 3-0. and Let's keep going. Every single game we've played so far, we have either Angel or Vampire Opportunist on, or the Flying Vampire on turn 3. So if we keep getting more matches like that, we're most likely going to win. So moment does come clutch in this mat in this archetype and it does serve pretty well so i'm happy i didn't go the battalion foot soldier route um all right let's see let's see if we can get a good starting hand again all right opening hand game is opponent still deciding i guess game is still loading Hopefully this gets by. I don't know what's going on. Are you a hacker? Are you holding me up? Hello? Alright, do I need to, um, maybe it's the lag going on, 
Do I need to like report a bug? I guess I might as well. Capture the log. Alright, I guess the pawn's on a timer. Um, I guess it could be his lag and this can just be a free win. Happy that they kind of brought something to punish these players for, um, I don't know, not having a valid connection. Okay, um, turn three, Audacious Thief. Tap, dual land, moment heroism, and murder. I think this is an okay keep and we're on the draw. Yeah, I don't think we'll get punished, so we'll keep. Well, happy the game started. Punk could just be lagging. I don't know. Start with a tap to scour barons. Hopefully, we can top deck a nice two or one drop along the way, and we can start uh, gaining some life. But I think this is decent with murder, moment, audacious thief, and the opponent's just lagging. So uh, we'll just. Um, Maybe give us a free win here. Alright, um, I guess the opponent's AFK. Well, um, that's a free win, so glad that I waited. I almost thought it was a bug for a moment, and I had to report it. But other than that, uh, currently 4-0. I guess it would be 6-0 if we managed to get 7-0 at the end of the day in this draft, since that was pretty much a free win. Who knows, I maybe could have won that too, but uh, let's crack a pack. So Kara's a nice first pick. Ooh, Vantress. Gargo is incredibly powerful. Uh, two mana, 5 4, that can eventually gain flying and put the opponent on the clock. Plays better than Black Blue Mill deck, of course, um, but I can see being reasonable in like even blue white artifacts or, um, you know, um, blue green. I think it's just a great creature overall. Um, can be weak to cards like Return to Nature, which green tends to play as a sideboard, but I uh, guess we have f five more hours, so let's get these wins before. Um, Get a nice good draft in, upload a nice video before uh, it's over. Alright, do we have to wait till the 2 minute mark again? Come on, Watsi, you can do better than that. Alright, please, 1 minute mark. Well, it's going to take up to 2 minutes to finally search a game. I guess, if you sense the 5 hours are almost over, nobody really wants to draft this set until it's over. Let me check the schedule to see which draft set it's next. Oh, I guess next set is going to be War to Spark. Um, yeah, that set has a lot. It's a pretty fun set, but there's the power level definitely varies, um, especially with those if you face against the opponent with a god or a um, or a broken rare planeswalker. Um, but it's a pretty fun set.
I wish we played traditional drafts again because um, I think that's a much more fair format. All right, turn one, now the Ebon Legion's broken, then Daybreak Chaplain, then we can pump it on turn three. And even Blood for Bones to fetch it back. I think I like it. Opponent's playing green, nothing to be worried about. I think it's fine attacking here. Next turn I can pump it. Do I pump it main phase? I think I do. Um, let's get an attack. Do I pump here at all? Yeah, I think I do. Don't really have any bone splinters, don't really want to develop a soul mender. I want to keep growing this Knight of the Ebon Legion to make it gigantic later, eventually. Now the bone splinters I could cast. Don't care about the ferocious pup too much. Um, I guess you have a bone splinter now for the ferocious pup. Okay, makes sense. So now what? Hmm. Could blood for bones here, could vampire. Hmm. Um, I could keep this, this up as a blocker. I could, again, just Blood for Bones. Um, but I, I, it would be better if I have two creatures on the battlefield, I suppose. Kind of like, um, I don't know. I could, uh... guess I could just bring this back, the Daybreak Chaplain back, and then bring back the Knight of the Ebon Legion. I even have Bone Splinters next turn to um, deal with another threat. So I think what I like here is just attacking... Opponent's definitely going to block. I gain a life and I cast Blood for Bones. Um, and let's return Knight onto the battlefield and then they break, break back into my hand. So I think this is fine. We can have a nice attacker. Definitely not blocking here. Um, he might have like Pharaoh Invocation. But uh, I don't think that's going to get past a uh, knight. You could also have giant growth, I guess. But I don't want to use bone splinters on a 2-2. So let's get in for an attack here. Um, and even if we, even if, if this 2 for 1's for like a pump spell, I can still double spell, I suppose. With one black and one white. Alright, don't mind this. Uh, so... I think I'm happy getting rid of a ramp engine at the end of the day. Yeah, you could have like a pump trick, knife pack ambusher. Well, um, now um, I can just play out soul mender and bone splinters. So I don't know if he pulled that off too profitably. Okay, this will end champion. A second one. Hmm. So he, he essentially has a good double block um, going on. So it's probably not wise to attack. Maybe I just play out my whole hand. I think that's even better. Eventually, I can kind of break past the opponent. I don't know if I tapped improperly. Yeah, I probably trapped tapped it wrong. I should have played them um, double black and then uh, vampire. But I still have uh, some. I still have a good Death Toucher against this um, Silverback Shaman, and I can essentially pump this twice eventually, so I think we're just going to say go. His own Knight? Okay. So I definitely need to keep the Vampire Dire Moon behind to block this Knight. Ooh, a Cutthroat. Hmm. So I can pump this twice, I guess. Um, I could just attack with the Santerum Skeleton. And um, if he... He can pump this once. The Family Cutthroat, I do need to be aggressive, but he could just use my two twos to block. If I pump this twice, what does this become? Um, it becomes a... Um, it's a pretty nice trade. Um, it becomes a, uh, it has five toughness, and then it's going to have, um, 
Yeah, I think that's fine. Just attacking here at night. I can essentially pump this twice, so um, it should revol result in a nice value trade. Um, definitely ordering the cheaper ones first. And we pump once. This becomes a 3-4-4, four, four, and then we'll pump again. Alright, I don't mind the 3 for 1. I still have a Death Toucher to deal with this Knight. In the meantime, well, he has his own Sedge Scorpion, but that's not going to do much. And another Ferocious Pup. So, Pwn definitely has a nice, interesting Black Green Grindy deck. Um, do I chump here? It's only 4 damage. This Knight isn't going to grow anytime soon. I think I just take it. I might as well just play out the, the Phantom Fleet Cutthroat now. I could just play out the Epic here, I guess. Um, could just attack with Daybreak Chaplain. Don't think I mind that. Just getting for one. And if he blocks, I can play out the uh, ep the Cutthroat, I guess. Ooh, okay, he's blocking the Knight. I don't think I mind that. And then we can play out the Cutthroat. Kill off his Knight. That was a pretty bad play by the opponent. So now I can actually offer the reasonable trade with the Dire Moon. Wolf Rider Saddle, okay, so only one creature can block now. This becomes a 4-4. Yeah, I don't mind trading this off. I could also potentially double block, but um, I think this can be pretty decent. I guess, yeah, I think this is decent. Do I play out land? Nah, just say go. Hide some info. Okay, the Barony Vampire can become a 4-4, but my Cutthroat can still trade onto it. Kind of the current board stall right now. Need some Flyers. Um, Pwn does have a really strong deck, however. Um, this 3-3 is annoying, but uh, I guess he doesn't have a pump spell. I guess he does. Well, that was bad. Um, should have double blocked. Okay, that was a real huge misplay. Um... But I guess I can still keep chumping the skeleton, I suppose. So I think I'm just going to play my land out to go. And we can just keep chumping with the skeleton to buy some time. But that was a pretty bad card. That was pretty bad for me, what I just did there. Okay, definitely train with the 2-2. Two -two. This looks good, and we can chump. That's why I like Skeleton, it's just a good chump blocker. Ooh, we also have Sorcerer to potentially drain them out. Don't mind that. Do need a little bit more lands, of course, but um... Alright, this is potentially indicating um, a pump trick. But I still think I'd go for it. Well, I guess he has a second one. Yeah, I should have played around. Okay, a growth cycle, sure. I can still block off this 2-2, two -two. and an Audacious Thief looks good. I could just start draining them, I suppose, and blocking eventually, but I think I like this just to uh, get out there. Next turn, I can kind of trade this off. Definitely chump blocking the 5-5 five -five here, and then I don't mind blocking the 2-2. Two -two. Hopefully it doesn't have another pump trick. Alright, land is good, and I think I'm going to attack with the Audacious Thief just to trade it off and draw a card. And it's definitely worth it here. Ooh, an Aerialist. Happy playing this. Could drain the opponent, but I think I want to chump blocker against this 5-5. So I think we'll just say go. Skeleton is definitely doing a lot of work in this matchup. Alright, Vampire is good. Um, so I think I can play them both. I can still drain them with the uh, Sorcerer. I can block the 5-5, five -five, I guess. And I can get him for 2 with this Aerialist.
Opponent just passes. Constantly putting the opponent on the clock. I might not even play out the Epic here, to be honest. Um, just so I can still drain them for two per turn. And I'm not, I'm not like in a hurry to play this out. It's not going to do anything relevant on the board. So I think we're just going to pass. Just kind of drain the opponent out as quickly as possible. But definitely not, not double blocking with the Epic here against the uh, Wolf. That one turn was pretty bad um, since I could have sent I could have essentially um, I could have essentially um, get a fine one for one at the end of the day and I had to cut throat so I should have double blocked but luckily uh, we're winning this so I sh but I'm um, definitely need to consider some thoughts in my next future matches All right. Um, currently five and zero. Oh, I'm. Th I think I'm gonna make a, a part two video since I'm almost out of time. But for now, uh, uh, we'll 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 move on to the second video. And if you want to um, see the draft portion, just uh, rewind rewind the video. So um, yep. Um, see you guys in the part two.